we present novel techniques for simulating and visualizing ductal fracture with the material point method. Our method resolves large deformation with significant failure and self-contact. We also maintain mesh consistency for texturing. Our approach trivially couples with other MPM approaches. Here we show an elastic mannequin walking through ductal walls. Self-collision does not require special treatment and is standard MPM. We are thankful for our armadillo's hard work. See the delicate fracture pattern we were able to generate with our meshing method. Here is a close-up view of the fracture region with the underlying mesh. We use two different plasticity models to capture different fracture modes. Ranking yielding condition constrains the maximal principal stress and is good for modeling mode 1 fracture. Its yield surface forms a quadrant or octant in the stress space. We obey the associative law when projecting the stresses. We use a softening rule to record material damage. When the material strain reaches zero, we set the Lame parameters to zero for the completely failed material. Our method is versatile and can work with a wide range of different constitutive models. In particular, we can use von Mises to model mode 2 and mode 3 fracture, which ranking could fail to properly capture. This graph shows the return mapping for von Mises. We compare particle MPM with different von Mises yield surfaces. Observe the bottom block shows more plastic features as its yield surface is 50% smaller. When undergoing excessive deformation, traditional particle-based MPM suffers from numerical fracture. We compare particle MPM with Lagrangian mesh MPM using a ranking yield surface. Notice how Lagrangian MPM captures the extensive stretching before it fails. Meshing is vital for creating photorealistic fracture patterns and lowers the resolution requirements. Here we juxtapose results rendered with reconstructed surfaces and meshes processed with our method. Notice how our method resolves sharp details and fracture patterns with as few as 4,000 particles. Our method also produces consistent features when surface reconstruction done in a per frame basis is unaware of the continuous crack propagation. We use the Lonnie triangulation to create a tab mesh, then split it into a degenerated Voronoi diagram to create a fractured mesh. For Lagrangian MPM, we simply use the tab mesh that was used for simulation. The quality of the cracked surface is limited by resolution. Without further processing, the outcome can be rather jaggy. Here we compare the original cracked surface with the smooth results. Notice that even a couple iterations can greatly improve the visualization. We perform the smoothing scheme on the undeformed configuration in order to generate a consistent mesh. We first identify the cracked boundary curve and smooth that in place. Then we proceed to perform a Gauss-Seidel smoothing on the cracked surface while fixing its boundary. MPM grid velocity helps us obtain the local orientation near each Voronoi cell center. We then extrapolate the grains using local rigid body transformation and sew them together to generate the deformed configuration of the split mesh. Now we show the projectile example with different resolutions. See how we were able to deliver great details, even at very low particle count. Here we show more twisting results. Here we break four columns and watch them break due to torsion. See how the different stiffness parameters influence the dynamics. Why bother using the knife when you can use our method to break a zucchini and still resolve a clean and sharp cracked surface?